Okay, so hi everyone. Today we are going to be talking about an important inherited neurodegenerative disease that is Huntington's disease or Huntington's chorea. So it is an autosomal dominant disorder, very very important question, with complete penetrance and it's relentlessly progressive and almost universally fatal and the important clinical features you are going to have here are motor, behavioral, oculomotor and cognitive. The motor features predominantly it's going to be chorea. Okay, because here the major site of involvement is the caudate nucleus. So as you know, when the caudate nucleus is involved, you're going to have chorea. And behavioral, you're going to have neuropsychiatric manifestations like depression, psychosis, then oculomotor features. And the cognitive dysfunction is predominantly a subcortical dementia. It's predominantly a subcortical dementia. And you'll also have certain endocrine abnormalities. Okay, we we'll look into it all this uh, in detail later on. So these are the constellation of uh, clinical features that you see in Huntington's disease. So coming to the epidemiology. So the age of onset varies from 25 years to 45 years. So why this wide range? This is because of the phenomenon known as genetic anticipation, which is known as genetic anticipation. So we'll uh, look into this later on. So genetic anticipation and around 2 to 8 cases for every 100,000 population. The average age of death is 60 years and usually it's commonly seen in patients of European descent, especially from, uh, especially northern European descent. However, it's rare in Africans and Asians. So these are important points regarding epidemiology. Now coming to the pathogenesis. I think everyone knows this. It's basically a trinucleotide repeat disorder. Okay. It's a trinucleotide repeat disorder. Here, the trinucleotide that's going to be repeated is CAG, okay, which codes for glutamine. Okay, so you have increase in CAG repeats, more than 40 in the coding sequence of the Huntington gene present on chromosome 4. This is an important MCQ. Okay, so in the short arm of chromosome 4, you have the Huntington gene where you have trinucleotide expansions of CAG usually more than 40. Now coming to the genetic an anticipation which we saw earlier. So what happens is, in subsequent generations, the disease onset occurs earlier. So why this happens is with every subsequent de uh, with every subsequent uh, generation, there's going to be more and more accumulation of these CAG repeats in the Huntington disease. That is why with more, with every generation, the age of onset is going to be earlier. This phenomenon is known as genetic anticipation, and it's a very very important MCQ question. Okay, now coming to the CAG. So like I told you, CAG codes for glutamine. So these trinucleotide repeats are actually normally present in everyone. So normally around 11 to 34 repeats are considered to be normal. But when the patient has more than 40 repeats, it's then when he's going to manifest as Huntington's disease. So the number of repeats is important. More than 40, patients are going to present with Huntington's disease. When the patient has intermediate amount of repeats, like around 35 to 39, patients are going to have late onset and mild disease. Okay, and sometimes can present as senile chorea. So there are many causes of senile chorea. Just remember that late onset Huntington's disease is a, one of the differential diagnoses of senile chorea. Okay, now come to the clinical features like we discussed earlier. The motor features, the main feature is going to be chorea because here the initial and major part which is involved in the brain is the caudate nucleus in the striatum. Okay, also to some degree the pitamin also, but mainly the caudate. So chorea, you're going to have a rapid, non-pattern, semi-purposeful uh, semi involuntary movements. Initially, the chorea is going to be focal or segmental, but later on it becomes generalized and progresses to involve multiple body regions. The other motor features, patients can have dystonia. Okay, and sometimes uh, Parkinson's like features can predominate in Huntington's disease. Patient will have rigidity, bradykinesia, and when Parkinson's features are predominant in Huntington's disease, it is known as Westfall variant. It's known as Westfall variant. So this is a very very important question. Westfall variant is when Huntington's disease has predominant Parkinson's like features, and this usually occurs as an early onset, usually in children. Okay, it usually occurs early onset and it's also common it's also common in another disease which is like Huntington's disease which is known as Huntington's like disease 2 type 2 so Westfall variant uh, Huntington's disease with Parkinson's features usually early onset and it's also present in Huntington's like disease type 2 then rarely you can also have myoclonus so this is a Westfall variant which we are talking about right now. So where you have a predominant Parkinson's syndrome, it's seen in younger patients in Huntington's like disease too and 10% of the cases will have Westfall variant. And another important point is, uh, patients with Huntington's disease, their functional decline is predicted by progressive weight loss 
despite adequate calorie intake okay so this is an important question so despite adequate calorie intake the patient is going to have progressive weight loss which predicts functional decline in hunting in huntington's disease now come to the neuropsychiatric features the most important one is going to be depression with strong suicidal tendencies this is very very common and patient can also have aggressive behavior and sometimes even frank psychosis so this is important neuropsychiatric manifestations now cognitive decline so huntington's disease causes a subcortical dementia okay in subcortical dementia remember your memory loss is not going to is not going to be very profound and your other signs of cortical dysfunction like aphasia agnosia and apraxia are rare or not seen so we'll discuss in a later class how to differentiate cortical dementias from subcortical dementias remember huntington disease causes subcortical dementia an endocrine abnormality very very important mcq these patients are higher risk of di developing diabetes mellitus and the other are endocrine abnormalities neuroendocrine abnormalities due to hypothalamic dysfunction no ocular motor dysfunctions patients going to have an increased blink rate okay so this is in contrast to parkinson's disease where the patients going to have decreased blink rate so increased blink rate important question and then both the pursuit and saccadic movements are going to be slow and later on uh, in the disease the patients going to have upward gaze palsy okay well, towards later on in the end of the disease it's going to have patients going to have upward gaze palsy Now, how do you diagnose? So, you have a patient with classical family history. So, as you know, the disease is autosomal dominant. So, surely there's going to be strong family history with all your classical motor features, neuropsychiatric features, subcortical dementia, endocrine abnormalities. So, that time you have to doubt Huntington's disease. So, if you're going to take an MRI brain, you're going to obviously going to have progressive atrophy of the head of the caudate nucleus and also some degree of the putamen. And later on, uh, as the disease progresses, the patient's also going to develop diffuse cortical atrophy. and in case in doubtful cases the gold standard investigation is going to be genetic testing okay so gold standard investigation is always genetic testing so how are you going to treat huntington's disease so remember there is no actually uh, curative treatment for huntington's disease as i told you it's very it's relentlessly progressive and almost invariably fatal we can just give some drugs to uh, help with the depression help with the neuropsychiatric features and to some degree help with the chorea so it's a multidisciplinary approach both all medical neuropsychiatric social along with genetic counseling so in case i ask you what drugs are used tetrabenazine okay so this is an important mcq so tetrabenazine what it does is it's a presynaptic dopamine depleting agent the problem with tetrabenazine is it can cause secondary parkinsonism so that's why they developed another drug that is deuterated tetrabenazine where the side effects are less compared to tetrabenazine the side effects are less and it's an approved treatment for chorea okay it's only for Chorea it doesn't affect the disease course only for treating the chorea associated with Huntington's disease and in case the chorea is going to be very disabling you can use neuroleptics ideally you can use atypical antipsychotics like risperidone or clozapin something like that and obviously antidepressants remember depression is profound in Huntington's Huntington's disease and patients tend to have very strong suicidal tendencies then anxiolytics and atypical antipsychotics in case the patient is going to have psychosis you can use atypical antipsychotics like clozapine quetiapin and risperidone and for the westfall variant as you know patients are going to have predominant parkinson's features so for westfall variant you can try anti parkinson's drugs okay so this is regarding Huntington's disease. So we also have a group of disorders which resemble Huntington's disease, but the mode of uh, but the gene which is involved is and other clinical features are little different compared to Huntington's disease. So they are known as Huntington-like disorders. So Huntington-like disorder one, just remember, it's due to octopeptide repeats, increased octopeptide repeats in the PR and P gene. So remember, PR and P gene is also seen in what disorder? It's also seen in prion diseases. Okay, this is in chromosome twenty. If you can go go back and look on our class on prion diseases, PR and P gene is the gene for prion diseases. So on chromosome twenty. Next, the important Huntington-like disorder that is HLD two. So this is due to increased CTG or CAG repeats in the junctofilin gene. And remember, HLD two very commonly present as Westfall variant. Okay, and in contrast. uh to huntington's disease where european uh, patients are very common here most of the patients are of african descent in hld2 and peripheral smear you are going to have acanthocytosis this is an important mcq next hld4 this is the most common type or most common form of hld here you have trinucleotide repeats in the tata box binding protein gene and here the prominent predominant clinical feature is going to be like spino cerebellar ataxia Okay, so this is about Huntington's disease and hunt and also Huntington-like disorders. HLD one, two, and four. Thank you.